Welcome to Explore Learning's Total Solar Eclipse video. My name is Tony Millerette and I'm an Implementation Coordinator living in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to talk about how you can use gizmos to prepare for the upcoming Total Solar Eclipse. On August 21st of 2017 there will be a Total Solar Eclipse and in only 93 minutes the Moon's shadow will pass from the Oregon coast to South Carolina. Let's look at several gizmos that will help us understand the science of a total solar eclipse. I'll begin our gizmos exploration with a question. What causes an eclipse? Well, an eclipse occurs when an astronomical object, like the Sun, is temporarily obscured or blocked from view. On Earth, we can view a solar eclipse when the moon passes between the earth and the sun. I am displaying the 2D eclipse gizmo on the screen today. This gizmo allows me to drag the moon to a location in its, in its orbit where it is positioned between the earth and the sun. Now when you first launch the gizmo you'll be seeing the Earth's shadow. But pr for purposes of this video, we want to focus on the Moon's shadow. The Moon's shadow is key because the Moon's shadow creates the path of totality. The path of totality is the locations on Earth that make viewing a total solar eclipse possible. Now the path of totality is the path of the Moon's shadow when it's striking the Earth. Notice that when I move the Moon, there are changes in the two thumbnail views in the lower right corner of the gizmo. The view on the left is the view of the Moon, and the view on the right is the view of the Sun. When I move the Moon, someone on the Earth will see the transition from one Moon phase to another. But notice that we don't see a change in the Sun view until we move the Moon in a position in its orbit when it's located between the Earth and the Sun. When the Moon is in this position, it's in the new Moon phase and this is the correct position for the occurrence of a total solar eclipse. Notice the difference in the images when the Moon is in this position and this position. These views are just a partial solar eclipse. The Moon needs to be in this position, in other words, completely obscuring or blocking out the view of the Sun, and all we see is the Sun's corona when a total solar eclipse occurs. Now let's explore what would happen if the moon were smaller. The gizmo allows us to drag a slider that reduces the diameter of the moon to 60 percent of its actual size. If the moon were smaller, a total solar eclipse would not occur. You can still see the moon However, there's a very large portion of the Sun that is not blocked from view. Well, what would happen if we increased the diameter of the Moon? A total solar eclipse would occur. You would just see less of the Sun's corona. Notice, however, that the Moon's shadow would be larger. And all of that means is that there would be a larger region of the path of totality which would allow more people to experience viewing a total solar eclipse. As you move the moon you will see each of the moon's phases. However, this particular gizmo does not tell you the actual name of the phase. For a review of the phases of the moon, Explore Learning has a separate gizmo called Phases of the Moon. 
This gizmo presents a two-dimensional image of the Earth and the Moon. We don't see the Sun, but notice that the gizmo states that the Sun is to the right and very far away. One half of the Moon is always illuminated by the Sun's light, but what do you notice about the new Moon phase? Well, usually on Earth, when the Moon is at new Moon phase, we don't see anything of the Moon. That's because the illuminated portion of the Moon is facing away from us. The gizmo helps us understand the visible portion of the Moon when I select Show the View Area. The image on the right will present each Moon phase and it will state the name of the phase and will show the elapsed time in days, hours, and minutes. I could drag the moon to show you each of the moon phases, but I'm going to select and click on the play button to allow the gizmo to cycle through each of the moon phases. So in just one day, we see the waxing crescent moon, and in approximately seven days, we see the first quarter moon. Then we're on to the waxing gibbous phase, and then in approximately 14 days, we will see a full moon. Now we're into the waning gibbous moon phase. And at approximately 22 days, you witness the third quarter moon. Onto the waning crescent phase. And then at approximately 28 days, we're back to new moon phase. Now notice that the gizmo is showing you the cycle of the lunar phases. This cycle was also modeled in the 2D eclipse gizmo. So if we experience a new moon every month, why don't we experience a total solar eclipse every month? Well, notice that the moon's orbit is circular and it's on the same plane as the Earth's orbit. Let's investigate the 3D gizmo because this gizmo will allow us to change the conditions of the moon's orbit around Earth. This gizmo will allow us to see the moon's shadow when we make that selection, and it will also let us look at Earth as if we were from in outer space. Now, the important feature that we're going to explore is changing the angular tilt of the moon's orbit around Earth. We can take it from zero degrees, or no tilt, all the way up to 10 degrees. Now, if the moon were orbiting at no angular tilt, it would appear just like the simulation that we see in the 2D eclipse gizmo. In other words, with no orbital tilt, it's orbiting Earth on the same plane as Earth's orbit. So notice that the gizmo will allow me to speed up the simulation. And what I would like for you to focus on is how often you see the moon's shadow striking the Earth if the moon were orbiting on the same orbital plane as Earth. The gizmo allows you to keep track of how often you see the moon's shadow striking Earth by looking at the months in the lower right corner of the gizmo. So when I select play, please Pay attention to how often you see the moon's shadow striking the Earth. 
Okay, there it is in January. And if you miss it, you can always push on the back button, which will allow you to reverse the gizmo so you can actually see the moon's shadow striking this portion of the continent of Africa. There it is again in February. Again in March. Again in April. So you get the idea. I'll just reset. If the moon were orbiting on the same plane as Earth's orbit, we should experience a total solar eclipse every month. However, we know that's not the case. So let's consider what would happen if the moon was orbiting at a 5.1 degree orbital tilt, which is very close to the actual circumstances. Once again, pay attention to how often you see the moon's shadow striking the Earth. There it is again in January, but notice how far in the southern hemisphere it's hitting. You would have to be in this location, very near Antarctica, to be able to witness a total solar eclipse. Notice that the moon's shadow is not striking the Earth in February, but actually passes beneath the Earth. And the same thing happens again in March, and this is much more common. The moon's shadow will either be passing below the Earth or above the Earth. This is the Earth again in May, and it isn't until June that we experience another total solar eclipse. So the gizmo is giving us the evidence for why it's sometimes considered a once-in-a-lifetime event to witness a total solar eclipse. And the reason for this is that you would have to be in this very narrow geographical region of the moon's shadow when it's striking the Earth to experience a total solar eclipse. Now, if you're having difficulty understanding or visualizing the difference between a zero degree orbital tilt of the moon's orbit and a 5.1 degree, the teacher's guide provides some excellent images to help you see the difference. The image on the left is the actual 5.1 degree orbital tilt of the moon, and the one on the right is of a zero degree or the condition where the moon is orbiting on the same plane as Earth's orbit around the sun. In this particular case, we would be seeing a total solar eclipse every month. However, total solar eclipses usually only occur about once or twice a year because of the moon's 5.1 degree orbital tilt. We've just reviewed three gizmos that focus on the science of eclipses. There are additional Explore Learning gizmos which provide the support teachers need for implementing the three-dimensional learning process of the next generation science standards. The 12 gizmos shown here are essential for helping students experience the science and engineering practices for planning and carrying out investigations. For example, these gizmos feature tables and graphs for student data analysis and interpretation. These gizmos also feature numerous variable selections which allow students to conduct their own what-if investigations. Students also experience the next generation science disciplinary core idea of the universe and stars, the Earth and the solar system. Finally, these gizmos allow students to recognize patterns in their natural world when they investigate the Earth's seasons, the phases of the moon, and the ocean tides. 
I'd like to thank you for your time and attention, and I'd also like to encourage you to begin using Gizmos to prepare for the August 2017 total solar eclipse.